Involvement with the energy management system is not limited to the designated energy manager. Everyone must be involved, it's an organisation-wide issue. And in this module, we look at what energy management means to the typical organisation in a company. The module covers each function in a typical organisation and discusses what they can contribute to energy management and what benefit they can expect. Completing this module will help you understand the breadth of workforce participation needed in a fully effective energy management system. But again, we should emphasise that good energy management does not generate extra work. All energy management tasks should be integrated into daily business operation. Top management is the owner of the energy management system. They will gain from the system's positive impacts on the business and they must take ultimate responsibility for the outcomes from the system. Top management should appoint the energy manager as the system champion. They authorise establishment of the system and declare their commitment to it. They must establish an energy policy, provide the resources needed for success, evaluate performance and constantly review it. The benefits for top management include improved profitability, stronger management, more skillful employees, fulfilment of corporate social responsibilities, more mo motivated work for workers, as well as reputational benefits. Finance and accounting are major information providers to top management. They're responsible for the proper integration of energy management with corporate cost management and for the integration of all reporting. They can provide financial assessments of energy initiatives. Similarly, they can, are necessary to verify the value of savings from energy initiatives. They provide information for the management of assets. Their provision of information on sales, revenue and profit performance is central to the indication of energy performance. And finance and accounting also benefit from an energy management system. More accurate energy cost allocation and improved cost analysis across the organisation will improve cost management. They will gain from the subsequent product cost reductions, business cost reductions and improved corporate profits and they will gain from stronger analysis and reporting practices as well as from business development. One of the strengths of ISO 50001 is that it provides guidelines for procurement. Purchasing is the act of buying, whereas procurement is broader. It's a strategic approach to purchasing in order to enhance an organization's operations. Practices compliant with ISO 50001 include the use of the life cycle assessment in purchasing, evaluations of the cost reductions from improved environmental or energy management activities, and improved supply chain management. The purchasing and procurement function will benefit from cost reductions and improved procurement practices as a result of energy management. They should also benefit from improved communications throughout the supply chain. The importance of good after sales will be highlighted. Safety will be enhanced and environmental impacts reduced, while the importance of procurement and purchasing to business performance and business development should become more obvious. As people are the key factor in energy management, the Human Resources Department has a very important role in energy management. HR should take energy management into account when assessing the skills needs of the organisation. They should draw up a plan to ensure any skills gaps in relation to energy management are met. They should conduct talent searches to fill those skills gaps. And they should identify human resources outside the organisation who could fill gaps where necessary. In turn, the energy management system can benefit human resources by providing enhanced skills, quality and competitiveness, recruitment of high potential individuals, long-term sustainable outputs and specialised fields, promotion of information sharing and more accurate assessments of the organisation's human resources and development needs, as well as overall cost reductions and business development. Most accidents in business are energy related and most are caused by people not following procedure or because there's a lack of procedure. In fact, energy management can, cannot be separated from health and safety. Health and safety should provide analysis of energy related issues from health and safety perspectives with recommendations and actions to improve performance, as well as input 
to the development of the energy and environmental management systems from a health and safety perspective. And health and safety will benefit from better workplace health and safety, improved sustainability planning that takes account of health and safety and business continuity plans, as well as better public attitudes to those plans, and overall reductions, uh, cost reductions in business development. The key function of public relations and energy management is to promote the benefits of the company system through external communications. The ultimate goal is to communicate to stakeholders that the organisation is fulfilling its corporate social responsibilities by developing the business sustainably. Communicating externally about the organisation's energy management, environmental and energy best practice factory tours, including energy performance improvement and CSR reports, coordinating with the energy management team to respond to energy related inquiries in a timely way and promoting the organization's environmental activities and their contribution to the community are all roles that should be taken on by public relations and PR will benefit from the business improved sustainability growing awareness of sustainability fulfillment of its corporate social responsibilities corporate image gains as well as the overall cost reductions and business development gains. The sales team can use the energy management system to develop their relations with customers in the supply chain through promotion of products or services that result from energy efficient and environmentally friendly practices, promotion of environmental and energy management solutions to clients, evaluation of how goods or services contribute to clients environmental and energy management, accurate client demand forecasts that help ensure energy efficient production, organization wide contact with clients including top management and consideration of the environmental and energy management impacts on the supply chain of the company's products or services. Many of the benefits they see should be tangible, increased orders and revenue, improved demand forecast accuracy, specific energy consumption improvements, production efficiency improvements and a decline in energy consumption intensity, inventory and industrial waste reduction, improved sales efficiency, improvements in business sustainability and corporate image, as well as those overall cost reductions and business development. Quality assurance can contribute a lot to energy management by ensuring the quality level of the management system ensuring the quality of the energy monitoring systems and equipment, ensuring quality standards are practical, development of procedures for quality assessment and energy management, supervision of continual quality improvement procedures and assumption of the leading role when auditing the energy management systems. And quality assurance will benefit from ISO 50001's fit with ISO 9001 quality management and ISO 14001 environmental management systems, as well as the organisation having the opportunity to become ISO 50001 certified if desired. They can be certain that energy performance indicators are valid, their quality management operations will be more efficient, they'll gain a better overview of the organisation's competencies, they'll benefit from the energy savings and environmental reductions, and from the overall cost reductions and business development. Whether they call the Information Systems Department or the Information Technology Department, an organization's IT team can play a key role in energy management. Real-time data collection, analysis and reporting is required if an energy baseline, energy targets and energy performance indicators are to be identified and the IT team can contribute to the energy management system by planning and implementing the system, helping to provide real-time energy and production data, supporting the verification of real-time energy savings, using IT to visualize energy movements remotely, planning and implementing the energy monitoring system, ensuring an optimal approach to IT organization-wide, building an information sharing infrastructure with a real-time communications approach and upgrading network efficiency. The information system team will benefit from the system through greater efficiency, consistency and innovation in factory operations, as well as enhancement of total production maintenance uh, with energy efficiency and productivity gains, 
an effective monitoring system that enables timely support and improvement, more effective energy management and environmental load reduction, positive evaluations and recognition of the importance of the information systems team, as well as those overall cost reductions and business development. By implementing an effective energy management system, the entire workforce will maximise the positive impacts from that system. They'll see improved efficiency in daily business operations and they'll reduce costs, improve performance continuously and they can implement an ambitious plan that can uh, to help evaluate quantitatively uh, uh, and uh, aid the aims of the sustainable business development. And from the implementation of that system, the workforce will benefit from reduced production costs and increased profits. Performance improvement across the business with increased earnings, improvements in their corporate business ranking, reputational gains uh, because they will be viewed as a superior rated enterprise executing business development through sustainability, and improved ful fulfilment of their corporate social responsibilities. This module has demonstrated the need for organization-wide perspectives when it comes to energy management. You need to make the entire workforce aware of the need for their involvement. As energy manager, you should draw up a role and benefit statement for distribution to people across the organization, setting out everyone's energy management responsibilities. And it should range from board members through every energy-related function in the organization.